What's going on everybody? Brandon Schaefer here. Thank you for joining me. Let's get right into proportions. So let's start out with the theory. And the theory is basically has to do with the diagonal and around any object. So let's take this persimmon for instance and let's imagine there's a box around its outer limits. And what that does is it creates a diagonal. So let me draw this out real quick. So let's take a rectangle of any size. It's a rectangle, so top and bottom are the same width and the sides are the same height. Now this creates a diagonal. You know, every, every rectangle has one, every square has one. Now this diagonal creates a proportion. The way that diagonal creates a proportion is that if we wanna draw this rectangle or object smaller or larger than it actually is, we have to maintain this height to width ratio and that's all due to this diagonal. So if we were to draw this rectangle smaller, if we maintain that same height to width ratio or diagonal, it's gonna be in proportion. If we did it larger, if we were to extend this angle out, it's still in proportion to the original aspect ratio or original ratio of the, uh, of the object or rectangle. That's really the theory. So let's get into drawing an actual object. Like how would I go about drawing this persimmon? What's the method? How do I keep it in proportion? So let's say I was to draw this persimmon larger than life. Not the same size, not smaller, but larger. So what I do is I pick two opposing sides. So I either pick the width of the object or I pick the height, top and bottom or left and right. Top and bottom or left and right. So in this case, I'm going to pick the width. So I'm going to determine the width on my paper. And that way I know it's going to fit on my page. You know, I don't want to start drawing something all detailed and then it runs off the page. That's not what you really want to do. And it's happened to me in the past. I'm sure it's happened to all of us. We start drawing something really good, really detailed. And then by the end of the drawing, we realize it's not going to fit on the page. So we want to avoid that. So I'm going to determine the width. And for this sake, since I have the object right next to me, I want to make sure the width is wider than the actual object because I want to draw it larger than life. So now that I've determined the width, I don't want to change the width at all throughout the drawing process. I want to keep that width exactly where it is and not change, uh, adjust anything as the drawing progresses. So I know that these two lines correspond to these two sides right here. So now what I can do is um, look at my object and observe that it's taller than it is wider. Even just by a little bit, it's a little bit taller than it is wide. So now that I have the width, I know I can make, I can make a, a little guide here, a little trick. So I can take the width of my paper, or excuse me, the width that I've determined on my paper. I can rotate it vertically, and now I can, uh, I can create a guideline there, and then a guide mark here. And what I just did was create a square, because now the height is exactly the same as it is wide. But we know that the persimmon is taller than it is wide. So now I know that when I draw this object, I know that it's gonna be taller than this, than these guide marks that I put down. So I know it's not gonna be any smaller than that because then it will be out of proportion. So now as I'm blocking this thing in, I start blocking in with straight lines only. I don't wanna, this whole object is very curved, a lot of curved lines here. I wanna avoid that. I wanna, I wanna act as if I'm, I'm laying straight lines on the outside of this object and really simplify it, break it down. So I can start at the outside here and just start guesstimating some of these angles. I'm gonna do this very quickly because I'm just demonstrating some concepts. I'm not, this isn't a tutorial video for drawing a persimmon. Uh, this is just showing the concepts for how I block this persimmon in. And something else to keep in mind, I'll go over here in just a minute, is finding a center line on your object. So here I can determine, I can roughly guesstimate where the center is because I have the width already. So now I can find the center and now I can double check myself by measuring. And that is pretty much the center. And now I can find the center on my object, do the same thing. And now I can, you know, if I was drawing a, a portrait or something, this would be much more valuable. But on something like this, it's not gonna be as valuable because it's just a fruit. But we can see that the center, at the center, there's gonna be the bottom, the point at the bottom is right at the center line. 
So I want to make sure that when I, wherever this point at the bottom converges, it lines up with this guideline that I have marked out as a center line. As I continue blocking this in, I'm just judging the angles, keeping straight lines. You know, just guesstimate the top here. Because now I know that it's, it's definitely larger than those guide marks that I had marked out. A little bit larger. And we can say, okay, that's something, something very similar to the persimmon, a little bit larger than life, very close to being uh, correct. And as the drawing progresses, what I'll get into in future videos is I can start using more straight lines to curve these harsh points. So see how that makes it a little more curved. You're already starting to get the shape of this persimmon. And also in future videos, I'll talk about comparative measuring of how we can determine, I can double check myself and see, do I need to change the width and height? Obviously, sometimes you can just look and observe and see, okay, I need to change the height. It needs to be a little taller. Maybe it needs to be much taller or it needs to be taller down here or shorter here. So basically these are the only lines that we're going to change throughout the entire drawing. We're not gonna shift. We're not gonna move the width inward or outward. We know that's the width we want and to order to keep that in proportion, we only wanna move the top or bottom uh, where that top or bottom actually is. And that's gonna create the proportion. That's gonna create that diagonal that we're looking for. Once you get used to doing this, blocking it in this way, it takes a lot of practice, even for simple objects like this. Um, I've had a little bit of practice here. But when you start doing like a grouping of objects, like a still life, or you're doing something outside, like a landscape outside, there's trees and buildings and things, you can start using horizontal and vertical lines, straight lines, to line things up. So we can see, okay, the bottom of this persimmon lines up with the middle of this other persimmon. So that's a guideline that we'd want to keep in mind. And that these uh, two objects here line up exactly uh, on this uh, vertical line. So that's things, you know, you'd want to run these guidelines over your subjects here and really just keep in mind, okay, the middle of this uh, lines up right here uh, with the shadow touching there. Uh, the middle of this lines up with the top of this. You know, there's all these different guides to keep in mind. And that's when you're drawing like something as difficult as a portrait, that's something you can keep in mind because you can start to see where your ear, bottom of your ears line up with the bottom of your nose or the top of your ears line up with your eyebrows. You know, you can keep all of these guidelines in mind and really line things up as, you, as your drawing progresses. And you can use your pencil, hold your pencil out and really line things up as best you can. And uh, later on, we'll learn about comparative measuring and how you can really figure out uh, if your drawing is correct. So for now, I think that pretty much covers, you know, just basic understanding of proportions, blocking it in width versus height, and then either um, determining the width on your paper of that object or the height, and then only moving the other two sides to determine the proportions. And that's gonna give you that width to height ratio and using these little guides to, to help you um, get a little bit closer to that rather than just guessing. You know, we knew that this persimmon was taller than it is wider. So I can, now that I have the width, I know I can use that and go, okay, the height's gonna be taller than that. And if I, if I determine the height to begin with, like if I just drew out the height, I know that the width is smaller than that. So now I can use that to my advantage, you know, just do the opposite thing. So now I know the width is actually smaller than that. So now I know that when I block this thing in, it's gonna be smaller than those guidelines that I had laid out. So I hope that makes sense. Hope that gets your brain flowing a little bit. Get your pencil and paper out, start drawing, have fun, and, and just try to block these things in. Draw very lightly, very light lines and uh, clean up your lines when you can, and you'll see that you'll start creating these curved lines from straight lines, and you'll be able to block in things a lot better and judge the proportions a lot better by keeping these two lines in place and only moving the top or bottom. Anyway, be sure to check out my other tutorial videos for drawing and painting. Also, subscribe to see future episodes. Peace.